we're going to start with the front facade because why not? Start with a bang. Normally I wouldn't advise to build the front garden first, but this gives us an opportunity to set the tone for the rest of the house. I do find it really interesting that the first thing you see is the double garage and you can't even see the front door. The front facade needs a facelift because at the moment it is just completely covered in greenery, right against the front windows of the house. You can't even see it. In landscape, we would always keep the front garden lower yeah. so that we can see the house on display. So by clearing that all out and creating beautiful layering of planting that's low and having just a couple of feature trees, then when you go past, you see the house and you see beautiful stylized gardens and it gives it a gorgeous facelift. So at the moment, the pedestrian entry is via the driveway, which is quite dated. We have a really wide front garden. So by separating the pathways from the driveway, you create a beautiful grand entrance to the house. Generally, I don't like to have a front pathway that goes straight to the front door. Yeah. I like to have a bit of a turn about the garden. Oh, and that fancy. Way, it's very fancy too. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> You'll see. But it creates great ambiance when you come into the property. What about the trees? You're keeping all the trees and the plants? How or? many camellias is too many? <laughs> there are a lot of camellias in this house, but we're going to get rid of most of it. Oh. No, I take that back. We're going to get rid of all of it except this one camellia. I'm just looking at it now and it has a lovely shape. It's in really good condition. So we'll leave that one there, Tim. Don't get rid of that one. We'll put a little tag on it so it doesn't get demolished. What about all the beautiful little rocks there? Are we gonna keep those? No, they're all gonna go. Oh. <laughs> good, I'm glad you said that one. So we're gonna get rid of those and we'll put in some lovely, just treated pine, timber edging, super simple, super cost efficient. Nice. Yeah. Well. What are you gonna do at the front? I'm gonna go controversial. I know Australia voted. But you're going to do the cladding? But I'm going to do the cladding. Australia is the client on this job and these designers are meant to stick to their brief. Look, it was pretty 50-50 in those results, but I think cladding is going to be amazing here. I'm going with a vertical cladding, which has this great strong line. And it doesn't make the house feel too much like a cottage or too beachy, like you would with your traditional horizontal weatherboard. These windows are old, they're thin, and they're not very practical for the house. The new windows are going to be double glazed, which means they're thicker, they're going to retain the heat inside the house, reduce street noise, and they're just going to look better inside and out. Is that doable? <laughs> look, I'll look after the cladding and the windows and I'll leave the painting to you. I think that's... Okay. Uh, I'll paint the house. Okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> what colour are you painting the house? You'd think that it'd probably just be like a white house, but I really want to do this beautiful eucalyptus green. 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 Oh, it's going to be a green house. I feel like people watching right now would be like, a green house, really? That's what's going but through I my head. But I trust you. <laughs> trust me, trust me. It's going to look good. The whole house is going to be inspired by texture and tones that you find in nature in the suburbs. And that way, every design decision I make can keep coming back to that. It's going to give us a really cohesive house. I really want to give an elevated look to the front driveway. So what I think we should do is give it a really nice coat of paint. Okay. So I'd love to have a bit of a hand with the painting side because I've never Ooh. done it before. I reckon you got it in you. That's a DIY project right there. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Just good weather, all yours. Oh, I'm terrified. No, you'll be right. Is it easy? Like no, I... easy as pie. Okay. All I'll right. paint you'll the have outside to of the house. Yeah. You paint the driveway. Okay. Learning some new skills here. That was a nice attempt at a handball by Inga, but painting the driveway is a great DIY project and uh, I think she would be surprised how easy it is. Sounds good, guys. Yeah. Sounds like we've got a really good plan. I think we've got a good plan. It's gonna I, look I'm, great. The green, yeah, we'll set, wait and see. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I've been briefed. The first things we're gonna help them with is the brickwork, because it's masonry, the concrete slab for the paving, the windows, the cladding. Uh, basically, everything else is DIY, so I'm gonna leave it to them. You know the drill, it's demo time. I love demo. Who doesn't love breaking things? Ow! So this is the tree that I decided to keep because it's in great health and it looks beautiful because it's flowering right now. This is a gorgeous older style Camellia japonica. But one of the things that I need to do is get rid of some of that pesky wood from inside the tree to make it look a bit more fresh. The other thing that I'm going to do is remove some of this bushy growth from the bottom of the camellia. That means that when we have our luscious green garden bed through here, you're looking at the new plants that have come in as opposed to a lot of growth down the bottom of this camellia. And last but not least, we're obviously exposing the trunk at the bottom.
I've created a large garden bed off the front facade of the house because that gives a lovely opportunity for between three and four tiers of planting. Deep garden beds balance the house and the garden out. The general rule of thumb is the taller the house, the deeper the garden bed. Now over here against the front fence, I'm going to do a shorter garden bed, creating an opportunity for only two tiers of planting because it will look visually more impacting from the front windows, but also because it's going to maximise our lawn area for the front garden. So I'm going to get spraying out so that I can visually see what we're going to have. Let's talk Landscaping 101. Originally we had a brick fence with a picket on top. We also didn't have a pedestrian walkway, but now we've got that feature to the front door, which is creating a lovely opportunity for a front gate. I've created some lovely picket designs to show you that are from an off the shelf product. So I've got this 45 degree picket where this is going to give you a really modern look, but it's probably a bit too modern for this house. I've then also got a nice arch shape, which looks great and when repeated would really elevate the home, but it's probably too many arches for this particular facade. And then I've got a simple square looking picket, which is modern, but it's not too modern. Now, if I pair this with a nice arched gate, that's going to give me the right look for this house. Now, when it comes to actually installing the pickets, all you do is you shoot them to your rails and you use the actual picket on its side as the gap and then you get the same consistent gap the whole way across your fence. All right, I think I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna get stuck into it. What are you doing? <laughs> Do I look concerned? What are you doing? You've got the worst concerned face on you. <laughs> this is probably one of the biggest decisions of the entire house. This is our front facade colours, but... They're, they're all green. Well, yeah, they're all green, but they're also different. There's four different colours here. There's... Wait, what? There's four colours. <laughs> Mate, you are completely out of your mind if there's four colours. No, there's definitely four. They're... They're all so different. So everyone knows that I love green. And like when I looked at those colors, they all looked exactly the same to me. It was white cabbage, double strength white cabbage, fennelly and half strength fennelly. Completely different. Do you have any thoughts that can help me? I like the green. The green is... <laughs> <laughs> that is not as helpful as I want it to be. Maybe narrow it down to two and call me back in 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> I'll leave it with you. I narrowed it down to the final two and we're going with white cabbage for the facade. Even though it's green, there's this little silvery blue tint underneath it that reminds me of eucalyptus leaves. Um, no, I didn't plan to dress as the front colour of the house. <laughs> but it's a good colour. Cladding the exterior of the house not only helps with modernising the facade because underneath we had this red brick, 
but it also helps with the energy efficiency because we're able to hide this insulation behind the cladding. And because we're cladding, we had to replace the windows and these are all now double glazed. It helps with the heating and cooling in summer and winter, again, on that energy efficiency, but it also dampens street noise from outside into the bedrooms. And over here, whilst I love the character of these old girls, they do date the place a lot. So I want to modernise them by boxing them out in timber. It's a really easy hack, and it means I don't have to replace these posts. And as an added bonus, it's going to match in with my new timber front door, which is going to pick up on those beautiful botanical tones that we're using for our facade. Nice one. Awesome. Inga! Inga! Yeah? Yeah. Look! <laughs> what have you done? We've got boxes built in around our posts. You made a feature out of the posts? I did. This was a DIY experiment, but it worked out perfectly. The updated posts are sleek, modern, and they add an architectural element to the front of the house. And I love them. I love it when Jono gets excited by something he's created. He's created, but, but I made them. I'm stoked. Look at that. Let's talk picking colours for the front facade. Now, a lot of Australians like to play it safe, choosing a black or a white. And whilst they're great, there are some things to consider. So, a black, whilst beautiful and elegant and modern, is gonna absorb all the heat in the summer. And a white is gonna look crisp and pristine for the first few weeks until it starts to rain or get a bit dirty. So don't be afraid to pick a colour for the outside of your house and we're gonna balance that out with a little bit of white with this beautiful textured brick. And then all the window trims are black. So I'm gonna bring those accents into door hardware, into the gutters, and just to add a little bit of a natural element, we're going with a beautiful timber door. So I don't have heaps of colors going on here, but when you pull them into what's happening in the front yard with these beautiful travertine tiles and a bit of greenery, they're all just speaking to each other in harmony. Nothing stands out too much. You're going to be the talk of the neighbourhood for all the right reasons. So I just got back from Bunnings with so many plants to put in the ground and there's literally no one here. How tall do these ones get? Really I want them just a bit higher than the fence line. Yeah, so then you beautiful. get nice fence and then you get hedge behind. Looks really nice up against the white too. Yeah, really it nice. pops because of the, the yeah. silvery colour.
So while it might be tempting just to get cracking and start planting, the best thing that you actually can do is divide all the species up and separate them into each garden bed that you're planting out. This way you'll be able to see what your garden bed is looking like and decide whether you like it or you don't. Now, a quick tip is look at the label that comes on the plant. It gives you lots of really good information about the plant itself, how to feed it, what time of year it's going to flower. But the most important part is it will tell you what size and shape that that plant will get to. Now, my rule of thumb is take the dimensions that it gives you and bring them in just a bit. And that way you're gonna get a little bit more of an established look once you finish planting. I'm already looking around and I can see that I've got too many gardenias in this garden bed. So I'm gonna take these ones over there. So I've had a look at all the wastringia hedges along the front fence and the beauty of laying all of these plants out before I get planting is I can see errors in my spacing. So I've gone along and I've made sure all my spacing is the same along the whole front fence, but I've come to here and it's a bit wider than it should be. So I'm gonna move them up and make sure they're evenly spaced and I'll have to put another one in at the end. job for you. See all these plants? We've got to get them in tonight. Right, shovels are over there. Let's get going. Tim told me this was an easy DIY job and he was not wrong. Look how good this looks. I'm so proud of myself. I'm happy with the front garden. I think it's gone totally to plan and it's completely elevated the look, which is exactly what I wanted it to do. When Inga said she wanted to start with the front facade, I'm not gonna lie, I panicked because you don't normally start there with a the renovation, but the color, the plants, the way it's all come together, it's so beautiful. And it really sets the tone of what's to come with the rest of the house. Why don't you join me in the bedroom? <laughs> it only took about 40 to 50 years, but archways are back and I'm here for it. Don't know if anybody's here, but I love the arch. <laughs> 